Welcome to Beginner Web Design episode 13 and in this episode we're actually going to be looking at a few different CSS3 properties and the reason why this sort of has its own episode is because CSS3 properties are a bit different from any other CSS attributes that you are using. So CSS3 is currently still under development which means it's not completely finished yet. And because of that, each individual browser has to add support individually for each one of these properties. So sometimes there is a time when Safari might be supporting one thing, but Firefox may not. And that sort of runs into issues. Usually when a browser first starts covering a certain attribute, they won't support the official syntax. They'll support their own individual syntax which really makes it kind of annoying. Usually the only difference here is what's called a vendor prefix. So it's just a little bit of text that you have to put before the property that tells each individual browser to use it. So let's take a look at a, uh, an, an example here. So I just have a gray box with some black text in it. It has a little bit of padding on it as well. So if just say we wanted to make these these uh, corners a little rounded we can use the border radius property and I'll set it to maybe 8 pixels. Now I'm going to actually see this here because I'm using Safari 5.1 which already supports the official syntax for border radius however if I was going to preview this in another browser maybe Firefox this probably would not show up correctly so what we actually have to do is add this property again under a different name. So for example, to make it work in Firefox, we're going to call in the Mozilla engine by saying dash MOZ and then another dash and we can type in border radius. So now Firefox knows that it should put on that 8 pixel border radius. No change in Safari because we already have applied that with border radius. If you want to cover legacy versions of Safari, then you would use dash webkit dash border radius. And this is good just because a lot of people have not updated to Safari 5.1 yet. A lot of people are still on Safari 5.0, especially if you are still using Snow Leopard and not Lion. So, uh, those are the two main prefixes that you will find yourself using a lot. If you're wondering about Chrome, Chrome was actually use Chrome actually uses the WebKit engine as well, just like Safari. So they usually provide support for both applications around the same time. So there isn't any different in there isn't any difference in syntax for the two browsers. So Mozilla and WebKit should cover a good amount of your audience. If you're wondering about the other vendor prefixes, there's actually a little tool that you can use to get all of them automatically. This tool is created by Jeffrey Way and you can use this at prefixr.com. All you have to do here is enter in your entire style sheet or just one individual property or just a bit of your style sheet, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to maybe type in body, and I'll just give that a border radius just for an example. And if I go ahead and prefix size this, we get all of the necessary browser prefixes for whatever we, whatever we need. So here we have border radius, Mozilla, KHTML, and WebKit. So if we were to now put this into our code, it should cover pretty much any browser that's going to be looking at our website. There are a few different options down here. So if we tick compress my code, it's going to give us a nice compressed version. If just say you want to develop with the official syntax, which is just border radius by itself, and then just, you know, put it into prefixer and have it spit out a production copy for you. So you can just use compress my code for that. You can also exclude different browser prefixes here. So if we were to only use, uh, 
Well, if let's just let's just say we didn't want to cover Mozilla browsers, we would just get this. There's also the all here because if you're viewing this video maybe a few years after it was created, then CSS3 is probably not going to be in development anymore and probably all browsers will support the official syntax. So you can just take your code that you've that you've used before, put it in here, tick off all and then you'll only get the official syntax. It'll take out any vendor prefixes for you. Now border radius can also give a unique value to each of the four corners and that's pretty much the same as margin so I can enter something like 9 pixels, 6 pixels, 3 pixels, 1 pixel and it goes in a clockwise direction so as you can see here and let me put this on the official syntax the top left is 9, the top right is 6, bottom right is 3, bottom left is 1. So again, it goes in a clockwise direction. That's the same for any browser, any vendor prefix. Uh, the other attribute I wanted to talk about today was box shadow. So box shadow has a, uh, a few different values, there's actually 5 of them and uh, there's X, Y, Blur, and Color, and I'll discuss the fifth in just a second. So we could say maybe 8 pixels for the X and 12 pixels for the Y, which is just offsetting the shadow a little bit. Uh, and let's say 6 pixels for the Blur and black for the Color. You could experiment this in any way you like. Uh, as you can see, it's 8 pixels from the left, 12 pixels from the top, it has a 6 pixel blur which is giving that nice shadow effect here and it is of course black. The other value here is actually between the Y and the blur but it's optional and that is the spread right here and that's actually going to make your shadow bigger or smaller than the content box itself so if we were to make this 30 pixels you can see it's kind of growing the shadow so you can use that whenever you need that. And of course there are vendor prefixes for that. If we pop this into prefixer, put it right here. You can see there is the Mozilla and the WebKit version of those. The values are exactly the same, it's just the properties that differ. And the last one is text shadow. And text shadow, even though it is a CSS3 property, it is already supported by all browsers. So, hooray, we don't need any browser prefixes for that. It's the same thing as box shadow, so we can just type in maybe 0, 1 pixel, 0, and white. And that's going to say just 1 pixel from the top and white. And we get kind of a grooved effect right there bit heavy but it's still a little grooved effect. So that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you will take some of these CSS3 attributes and use them in your next project and in the future we're going to be talking about even more of them and more ways to use them. Don't forget about Prefixer. Again that is prefixr.com. It's definitely a big help for your next project. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And remember to check out the next few episodes.